Hey, you're listening to Don't Make Sense. I'm Dr. Vivian Rodriguez, an educational psychologist, blogger, educator, and coach who loves to talk about style, life, creating, and mental health. Okay, so I started this podcast to create a space to talk about style and substance, to talk about the complexities of being a woman who's authentic and thriving. All right, let's get into it. All right, in this episode, we're going to be talking about five tips for women to rock your 40s. Okay, so since I've entered my 40s, I've realized that wellness is about balance, not perfection. And I've, I've learned a few things in this decade. And this episode, we're going to round up five tips that I think have been game changers in my 40s. And I think they might help you too. Are you loving shapewear as much as I am? I'm loving all of the different shapewear options that are out there now for us ladies and especially Honey Love. Oh my gosh. So I have a few different items from them. What I'm loving is that Honey Love has camis, tank tops, body suits, and all of them are super supportive and they're doing the shaping you want and you can just wear them as tops. You don't have to wear them under everything if you want to wear them on their own. So I have the promo code link for you guys to get 15% off Honey Love items. So what you're going to do is go to the show notes and you're going to click that promo code link and you are boom, ready to get 15% off Honey Love. So go and check it out. I get it. You want the links to shop, right? But you don't want to be scrolling through socials to figure out where to find something and what's been shared and what's on deal, right? So I got you. Go ahead and sign up for my email list called Just The Links. So this is going to give you a couple things. You're going to get the deals that are live on Amazon. You're going to get any of my target favorites that I recently purchased. And you'll get the last couple pieces of content that I put out that you guys have been loving and all of them will have the links for you to shop. Super easy. Don't worry about the algorithm. You just sign up and it goes right to your email inbox. And don't worry, I'm not going to spam you. You know, we don't got time for that. Um, It'll be a weekly email and you will be able to get all those links and you don't have to worry about missing out on anything. So go ahead, go to the show notes, click the link to sign up for my Just The Links email list. All right, the first thing is sleep. I feel like sleep has been the ultimate foundation for me. So first of all, sleep is just often underrated. I think that it's critical when we don't sleep well, or at least I'll speak for myself. When I don't sleep well, I I feel like there's a series of bad choices that begins to occur anytime I'm just feeling fatigued or didn't have enough sleep. It's like if I had a day where I made like some not so great choices with what I'm eating, didn't work out, and I'm just cranky and just not my best self, I can just kind of do some backwards mapping and it all goes back to I didn't get enough sleep. I think that sleep is critical because it's the foundation in which you build everything else for the rest of the day. For instance, I notice when I don't get enough sleep, that is when I make the worst choices with what I'm eating. I'll be more likely to want something with sugar or have more caffeine than I need to. It's just, it's just like a cascading series of, of bad choices afterwards. And I also notice when I don't get enough sleep, I don't respond to stress as my best self. I don't, you know, look at stress as a way to, uh, you know, kind of alert me to reflect, rethink, have a game plan. Instead, I'm just more reactive um, to stress and I could let it derail my entire day. And then the other thing is I noticed I will just not be into being active or exercising as much. And I will, you know, if I do go to the gym, I just won't be just, it won't be just, it'll be kind of a crummy workout. And the other piece is that if I'm more irritable and I'm tired, I just feel less focused and my skin 
I can tell. I can tell when I have not rested. I feel like that's a big difference than when I was in my 30s, in my 20s. I could run on less sleep. But as I get into my, well, getting, you know, past the mid 40s, um, I can tell that if I don't sleep, it just shows in my face and it just shows in my skin. So again, sleep is the jam. And I also think what I've noticed, if I am feeling really fatigued and maybe I didn't sleep well last night for whatever reason, I will be more inclined to take a nap and then I'm back on again. And I didn't do that before. I used to be kind of anti-nap. And now I feel like when I do that, if I kind of listen to my body and I go and take a nap, um, if possible, right, then I'm able to be like back on track and ready to go. The other thing that is different in my 40s that I feel like has made a huge um, impact is moving every day. So that means I am trying to use my walking pad every day. So before I would use like walking as also uh, like my gym time. Does that make sense? So I'd be like, okay, I only have to do some sort of physical activity, uh, you know, three or four times a week. Okay. This is in like my thirties and early forties. And what I realized is no, you know, the bad news, I guess for some folks is I think you got to move every day. And now I just make it part of my routine. That's like the default, unless I'm not feeling well. If I'm feeling kind of sick or something like that, you know, you're catching a cold, I don't push it. But um, walking has been just something that's made a huge impact in my wellness. So I will get on my walking pad in the morning. I'll wake up at five, you know, and um, even if I just get in a mile, that's good. If I can get in two miles, that's, that's ideal. And I just get on the walking pad and then I go on my laptop and I might work on stuff for my blog or, you know, if you didn't have that, you can just read or journal, whatever. But I'm not trying to push myself every day, but I am just making it, it's like brushing my teeth. I get up, get on the walking pad and it just makes a difference in my energy level. I feel like my flexibility um, just in terms of like the composition of my body, it just makes such a difference. And so I just use that as my baseline, right? And then the gym, trying to hit that, if you can, three to four times a week, four is ideal. And I and I just get in and get out when I, when I go to the gym. But that way I don't have to do the battle of, do I do cardio or do I do weights, right? So you're just doing that cardio, getting that in and making it a time that you use for something that you're, you know, like you journal or whatever, or if you can get in walks. So in the summer, when I had, you know, I was off, I was able to do walking in the morning on my walking pad because it's so early, I'm not going to be outside. And then I would do in the evening a walk like with my husband. I mean, yeah, most of the time with my husband and just get some, some steps in. Again, you don't need to, I think, have like strenuous exercise all the time. Um, but getting that movement in daily is, is huge. And I can just tell my energy level is, it's just, it's kind of steadier than before by making that a a daily thing. And then that way I can just focus on my weights. You know, I can do a little warm up when I get to the gym, but I'm not having to go, well, if I do cardio and work out, I'm now I'm going to be in here an hour and a half. I can just be at the gym 45 minutes, an hour, get my weights in after a warm up because I already got that cardio in. Also, if you're doing that, like walking every day, you know, um, then you don't have to, like if you miss a day at the gym, you at least got some movement in. So I just feel like it just makes such a big difference. Next up is building strength through weight training. So I shared before, I had a trainer for a year and a half, completely life changing to have someone work with you on not just, you know, your fitness goals or whatever, but learning how to weight train, how to go up in weights, how to track it, what to do, what um, different exercises do, what, you know, just all the things. It's made a, a huge difference in how I view the gym. I don't feel intimidated. I can go in the weights section and get what I need to get done. 
And I also feel like I am uh, more knowledgeable about the types of exercises I want to do to get the maximum benefit and with respect to how much time I have. So doing like compound exercises like squats, you know, um, just so many uh, benefits of having a trainer. Now, if you can't afford a trainer, yeah, not everyone can do that or you don't have the time. I think looking up weight training for women or getting started, I'm sure there's so many videos on YouTube, if that's how you work or podcasts to just get you comfortable and give you a foundation on it how to, you know, lift weights. I also think if you can find a class at, at the gym and they do like those group weightlifting types of things, you can do that. But I feel like it will be such a confidence booster because you feel so strong when you really get going. And for me, I didn't see a difference. Uh, it took me about, I want to say like a month and a half to really start to see some development in terms of um, muscle development and, and just feeling stronger. So you got to kind of stick with it for a minute before you see that. But now I feel like it's so good and it's great for this age I'm at this season for building muscle as we start, our bodies start to change and you have muscle loss. All right, next up is having intentional nutrition. What do I mean by that? I have just stopped focusing on restrictive diets and instead I focus on intentional eating, like what I'm going to eat. And also I feel like one thing I didn't do before in my thirties is I didn't pay attention to how my body feels after eating too much sugar or processed foods. You know, I, I kind of wasn't making that connection that it's like what I put in my body is going to impact my energy level inflammation, all the things. So I used to feel like sluggish and like kind of puffy from having um, either something really like, you know, sugary, salty, you have it just processed food. So now I focus on the foods that's good, that are going to make me feel good. I'm not restricting myself, you know, like there's some things I'm still going to eat, like a tostada, you know, or tortilla chips, stuff like that. I still might eat that, right? But I'm just trying to be mindful of not eating that all the time and um, paying attention to how my body feels so that I do, you know, and I eat stuff that is going to feel good afterwards. And so fiber rich carbs, proteins, um, and a lot of water, but I've totally have limited my sugar intake big time. I used to have like uh, coffee with like creamer that's oh my gosh so much sugar in it so good right but just loaded with sugar I realized having creamers with a ton of sugar and it just it was just not working for me so I started to limit my sugar intake to um, just have like for instance before I would have coffee with creamer right now I'll just have coffee with like the almond milk that's unsweetened vanilla uh, and it's like I don't know 40 calories or something and no sugar I just put it over ice and I just got used to that and now if I have something with sugar every now and then I'm like oh wow that's really sweet but it, I just I'm not craving that you know I have uh, just no desire to be like putting a ton of sugar into my coffee same with my iced tea if I have iced tea I don't put a ton of sugar I don't even put any sweetener in it just got used to that and then focusing on water. And then the one thing that I cut out that folks, I, I guess this is like setting them off. <laughs> so, but we'll get into it. Is alcohol. I ditched alcohol. Now, I want to get into how this happened uh, so that you don't think you're like, wow, okay. No, the reason I, I did that was because 13 years ago when I had my son, He's 13 now. I had to like, you know, I was nursing and then I was having to do the pump and dump, right? So that you have to, you know, if you um, are, you consume alcohol, you have to, and you're breastfeeding, you have to pump that, you know, out and then dump it. And I just felt like that was so labor intensive. And then I realized that like in my 30s, I would start to really feel worn out and, 
um, just off for a few days after having alcohol. And I'm not even like, it wasn't even like drinking a lot. I just could tell a difference in my energy level. Just, I felt dehydrated. I felt like inflammation. It was all the things that just did not feel good. So I slowly kind of just stopped, you know, drinking. And then when we would go out, I just was like, no, I'm good. And, and now I just don't even touch it. It's just, it's not going to work for me. You know, and I know everybody's different. So this kind of set people off. But for me, this is what helped me keep my routine up, right? So all the things I was telling you about, I don't have to worry about feeling lethargic, having headaches and all this other stuff because I drank, you know, two lemon drops uh, drinks the night before. And um, I can stay on track with my routine and I just feel good overall. But, you know, do you? right? Everyone's different, but that's what worked for me. All right, there you have it. By focusing on sleep, movement, weight training, intentional nutrition, and ditching the alcohol, I feel like I am thriving in my 40s as I start to near the end of my 40s. And I feel like I'm just more clear-headed, all the things. So, you know, go ahead and, and try these tips out and see how it goes because you know what you deserve it you deserve to to feel good and in rock your 40s <laughs> like what you're hearing go ahead and subscribe rate and review the podcast you can also share the podcast on instagram and tag me at live by viv as far as my music it's the croft by yokim karud and everything we talked about in this episode can be found in the show notes on live by viv Okay, and remember, don't mix in because you don't need to.